This is what we have here today. A 1967 Mercury Cougar XR7. Yes, it's actually a legitimate XR7. There's left of it. You can see in here where the questionable taste begins. Speedometer, factory tachometer, covered by giant Sun Pro thing. B&M ratchet shifter with popped rivet. Switch that I assume is for the cooling fan, some weird wiring mess. I don't know what it does. Interior's gutted. That's the only bit of rot on this car. The rest of this is really very solid. Now, it has on the back of it some individual's social media locator thing that I do not remember the name of what they're called. So that'll be getting scraped off. This is an interesting touch here. They literally painted BF Goodrich onto a set of tires. They appear to have sanded over whatever the original brand was to do so. It is this way on all of the tires. The front fender is not held on well, but it is solid. And this paint scheme, this is worse than anything I've ever seen. Attempted by an individual serving with the Coast Guard in Michigan. This is just bad. Very bad. I mean, they cut the hood for hood pins, which they are actually functional, and the only way now to secure the hood, because that latch doesn't work anymore. The radiator in here is new, obviously, aluminum radiator is new. Newer carburetor, I have not yet tried to start this. I will soon, but at present the coil is wired directly to the distributor with no other lead off of it. I assume this was plugged in here, but that's the negative terminal of the coil. I can always just jump the starter at the solenoid, which is what I'm going to have to do, but quality engineering here with zip ties. <clears throat> Now we'll get around to the back of this car. Little rust spot here, little damage there, but no fuel tank. They must have been running some sort of fuel cell. Here's the connector for where the sending unit goes, so at least they had to say it's not to cut it. This hinge works. This one does not. Uh, let's see what else. I'll figure out what that goes to. But spring hanger here is... No, no, that's for the exhaust. Okay, right. The exhaust is now routed out the side just before the front wheels. <laughs> oh, no. These actually are BF Goodrich tires. And they have raised white letters that they chose to put on the inside. Oh no, that tire is not BF Goodrich, that's a Provide brand. And they didn't paint over that one. Okay, so I've got mixed match tires. There's where the new exhaust comes out. This is the rustiest spot on the car. It's solid. needs to be addressed but the nice XR7 wood grain is why you would get rid of the original shifter to put in that garbage I don't know oh look at that cheesy plastic or er, foam tombstone for God only knows what reason I mean wait a minute I think I see a solution for this problem let me try something right here. Okay, good. There isn't a hole there. And there, we fixed the floor. Huh. 
I do not like how loose that door is. Okay, opening it was a bad idea. Although there you can see the original paint color. So we're just going to kind of push that back on and call that a day because apparently it needs front hinges. And I thought it was just the front clip being loose because the front clip is loose. Newer shocks, I have to check and see what the motor is on this. That's weird. Ooh. That's exciting. That is a nice Holly double pumper. I mean, no choke. The linkage is still hooked up though, and it's probably, that's a decent carburetor. And, yeah, electronic ignition. So again, somebody spent some serious money on this in the stupidest ways. You have an Edelbrock air intake on a Holly, and it doesn't sit right as a result or thread in because, of course, it won't. Uh, of course it won't. This, this is just plain stupid. Why would you replace rotating headlight assemblies? One of the greatest cars with hideaway headlights. You choose to replace them with this. So you have that god-awful empty grill space and transmission intercooler. I don't know if this was an AC car or not. I don't know what these go to. I'm going to have to dig into it. But it's got headers. Very poor quality headers with lovely bolts. And of course, the jack on my trailer broke. So that made getting this an interesting ordeal. It didn't happen when I was getting it. Now this is the line in for the fuel tank. Line out is just missing. So not a big deal. And since there's no fuel tank in the car whatsoever, that'll actually make cleaning it easier. But again, we see the mix match theme coming through with spark plug wires. And apparently they've got a pit crew living in here. No idea why the valve cover oil fill is missing. Oh, I don't know if that's factory du dual master or not. Hmm, missing one of the bolts on the cross brace. Shocks are okay. Coolant expansion. No, that's washer fluid tank. It is hooked up to nothing. But that's again par for the course. Temp sender. This electric fan placement is just so mind-bogglingly stupid. Oh! Well, that's interesting. Do you see what's here? I don't either. There's supposed to be a power steering pump. It, see, here's one of the lines. That would go to the power steering. This car apparently no longer has power steering. Hmm. That's going to be a fun one. <sighs> yeah. If you ever wondered what happens to projects that teenagers start and somehow they screw up the car horribly, apparently the answer is eventually they find their way to me. There's fluid in the radiator though, so it's not leaking, but what is it? That's... Hmm. Water, just essentially straight water. I'm going to have to drain that before winter. You know, before it gets down to freezing. Here, in Texas, where our daily high is 103. I better worry about it freezing. Hmm. Oil filter's newer, and it's not a Fram. So that's something. Well, at least they... Ooh, let's... Oh, I'm thinking of that. Let's check the oil. That's over here. Yep. Let's see what we've got. 
it's full and it's not horrible. Okay. Now the oil dipstick does not want to go back in. Lovely. That's the ticket. Well, this is going to be a fun, fun car. No heater core, not surprising. Not really a concern also. Hmm. Vacuum hose bar, but I'm assuming they just went with this carburetor to eliminate vacuum leaks, which would have been a concern, but it's decent Edelbrock intake. Well, I'll keep you guys posted. More will come of this car. I'm going to be restoring it. My hands are kind of tied on that one. Eventually, this will wind up being a car for my father. And he's been pretty good to me over the years, so if he wants me to fix a god-awful, screwed-up 67 Cougar XR7, who am I to tell him no? Well, I could, but I'm not gonna. Okay, if anyone wants more of the history of these cars, I can always do history lessons. Oh, apparently there's the proper threaded shaft for the air cleaner assembly that's wrong for the car. Anyway, if someone wants actually more of the history of these cars, what makes the XR7 interesting and why this thing's worth fixing, I'd be happy to go into that next time. When I give you a progress update after I figure out if the motor will still run. So, look forward to that, or if that's not the direction you want me to go, tell me. And for those of you who enjoy telling me that I'm wrong or an idiot, or just harassing me in general, keep it up. I don't give a shit. Okay. That should do it.